Part One, Chapter Four of Concerning the Spiritual in Art by Vasily Kandinsky, translated by Michael T. H. Sadler. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine. Chapter Four: The Pyramid. And so, at different points along the road, are the different arts, saying what they are best able to say, and in the language which is peculiarly their own, despite or perhaps thanks to the differences between them. There has never been a time when the arts approached each other more nearly than they do today, in this later phase of spiritual development. In each manifestation is the seed of a striving towards the abstract, the non-material. Consciously or unconsciously, they are obeying Socrates' command, know thyself. Consciously or unconsciously, artists are studying and proving their material, setting in the balance the spiritual value of those elements, with which it is their several privilege to work. And the natural result of this striving is that the various arts are drawing together. They are finding in music the best teacher. With few exceptions, music has been for some centuries the art which has devoted itself not to the reproduction of natural phenomena, but rather to the expression of the artist's soul in musical sound. A painter who finds no satisfaction in mere representation, however artistic, in his longing to express his inner life, cannot but envy the ease with which music, the most non-material of the arts today, achieves this end. He naturally seeks to apply the methods of music to his own art, and from this results that modern desire for rhythm in painting, for mathematical abstract construction, for repeated notes of color, for setting color in motion. This borrowing of method by one art from another can only be truly successful when the application of the borrowed methods is not superficial but fundamental. One art must learn first how another uses its methods, so that the methods may afterwards be applied to the borrower's art from the beginning, and suitably. The artist must not forget that in him lies the power of true application of every method, but that that power must be developed. In manipulation of form, music can achieve results which are beyond the reach of painting. On the other hand, painting is ahead of music in several particulars. Music, for example, has at its disposal duration of time, while painting can present to the spectator the whole content of its message at one moment. Music, which is outwardly unfettered by nature, needs no definite form for its expression. Painting today is almost exclusively concerned with the reproduction of natural forms and phenomena. Her business is now to test her strength and methods, to know herself as music has done for a long time, and then to use her powers to a truly artistic end. And so the arts are encroaching one upon another, and from a proper use of this encroachment will rise the art that is truly monumental. Every man who steeps himself in the spiritual possibilities of his art is a valuable helper in the building of the spiritual pyramid which will some day reach to heaven. End of chapter 4 Recording by Expatriate in Bangor, Maine